stocks our strategists feel are poised to deliver positive returns are featured now in their top stock picks of the week. We have a metals company that has a real good bullish outlook on it that we're going to hear about, and a communications company set to move higher than it even already has. Dave Bartosia, Kevin Cook with me here to fill us in on each of their top picks for the week. Dave, we're going to start with you. You have that metals manufacturing company. It, um, it's the bull of the day today on Zax.com, as a matter of fact. Funny how that works. It is. I wonder yeah. what genius wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, Worthington Industries. Yeah. So they are a metals manufacturer, value-added metals manufacturer. So they make metal that much better. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so they do rolled steel and things like that. And they're here in the U.S., mm -hmm. which is, I think, part of the reason why they've been getting a boost since the election. They're kind of in that sort of Trump rotation play that we've been talking about. You know, anything in industrials, healthcare, or financials has done relatively well since the election. Pretty much, well, I guess everything's done pretty well since the election, but especially those three sectors of the market. Um, but taking a look at the price consensus and EPS surprise chart here on Zax.com, you can see why the stock has done so well. And you can also see why it did so poorly throughout the course of 2014 and 2015. Estimates come crashing down, um, you know, with very, very strong U.S. dollar putting pressure on metals prices. Um, but now here we're getting these rumors of, oh, we'll have some protective tariffs and, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be all about U.S. manufacturing. Um, so that's part of the boost here. But really, just take a look at the, at the EPS uh, estimates here. Um, we've seen huge growth over the course of this year, and the price has essentially just followed it. And you have a couple of surprises along the way, which obviously help. So we've seen a huge uptick in volume here as investors have become increasingly interested in this stock. And now it's at 52-week highs and looks to be breaking even higher. So a lot of momentum behind this name. And uh, I think it can keep going higher. Okay, cool. And then, Kevin, you have Acacia Communications. This stock is up significantly since it IPO'd back in May. Yeah. Yeah, and it was uh, at one point it was one of the best IPO performers of the year. Um, yeah, it came out in May, around 25 bucks, went as high as 125 mm -hmm. in September. So people were happy there. There were a lot of upgrades then too. I remember at the time, uh, both Bank of America and Deutsche came out and moved their price targets from like 90 to 125, 130. But then things started to fall apart a little bit when they did a secondary at $100 another four and a half million shares mm. at $100. I mean, that, that was bold for, for a stock move like that. Like, hey, you know, we're gonna sell some more shares up here. Uh, but let's talk about the company real quick. Um, optical networking equipment for data centers, uh, cloud businesses, but they even do long haul uh, optical stuff, you know, uh, serving the you know, 100 gig uh, market. And uh, people were excited about this company because Facebook is a customer uh, building out their, oh, their okay. uh, cloud and data networks they use these optical components from Acacia. And don't confuse Acacia with other Acacias out there. There's Acacia Research, which I've traded before. This is Acacia Communications, ACIA. Now, so this terrific run, now it's pulled back over 50% to $75. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what was that run based on? The, the fundamentals were there. The company is profitable, and they're growing revenues this year at nearly 100% versus last year. So. Uh, they did 239 million in 2015. They're going to do uh, north of 470, 75 million, about 475 million this year. Mm -hmm. So that's you know that's the growth you're paying for here. This is not a value stock. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, after their Q3 earnings beat and their guidance uh, estimates shot up, they beat by 22 percent on the bottom line, and then analysts have taken estimates up 22 percent for next year, from from 234 to 287. At 287, it's trading um, in the mid 20s on, mm. on a forward multiple, so it's it's not uh, it's not out of hand either. I want to uh, take a look at the chart here real quick because there's some interesting things on here. You see this moonshot, um, <laughs> and this is because they kept raising guidance, and maybe people found out that Facebook was a big customer, so the stock launches from the 70s and then lives up here in September and August. Um, you know, 125. Uh, then some things happened. I'll, I'm going to put a circle around here. A couple of events happened here. Uh, this pop up here, uh, back above 110, was when they raised guidance again okay. for this quarter. So that was encouraging. And then the big sell-off was the secondary. Uh, they're going to sell another four and a half million shares. 
priced it at 100. Uh, boy, everybody's underwater there, right? Uh, another thing to note here is in this run up, so this is July, September, July, August, September, um, there was steady accumulation by the institutions, which you would not be surprised at. And now they're underwater. I mean, unless they, unless they were buying you know, most of their chunks down here below 70. Uh, full disclosure, I bought it for Tactical Trader uh, last week. Um, so we own it here. I'm looking to buy, add to my position on any pullbacks below 70 because uh, so Q3 earnings report was right in here and you see what the stock did? It, it has held this 66, 67 area. So that's why I'd be a buyer anywhere near 70. What else is interesting is this was the lockup expiration. November 9th, six month lockup expiration, meaning you know a lot of insiders can now sell mm -hmm. and the stock has held its ground here. So that, I find that very encouraging. Um, you know, and so when it became a rank one again, after this, uh, this blowout earnings report, that's why I was a buyer. Um, and you're, if, you're, if you're looking at this thing technically, um, mid-60s is about a 62% retracement from, say, 23 up to 128. So we've come down, sort of touched in that 62% retracement area, and the stock is holding its ground well. Um, then this is why I'm a buyer here, looking for uh, a steady move higher this quarter. So just to clarify, that pullback that you talked about after the secondary offering didn't seem to hurt the overall picture on this company. No, it certainly didn't hurt the fundamentals. It just buried a lot of the holders of, of shares, yeah. uh, and especially the ones who took on that secondary. Um, they probably weren't expecting it. It was, it was smart of the company uh, you know, to raise that money up there. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of holders who are underwater now. So there's going to be some natural pressure on the stock. And uh, it, does this company qualify as one of those uh, Trump rotation stocks? No, no, completely unrelated to that. You know, okay. it's just a young technology company that's in an exciting area with, you know, building out these data centers and cloud infrastructure, and they want things to go at lightning speeds. You know, the, the 100, 100 gigabits per second or faster. Mm -hmm. This is the company that makes that equipment. Okay. I've been trying to come up with a much wittier name for the Trump rotation, and I can't do it. <laughs> I've been trying to figure it out all week, all weekend. I don't know. You're the creative it'll person strike. in the group. So. It'll strike me. I'll be sitting there meditating, and it'll hit me. In the meantime, do you own your stock? I have it in Momentum Trader. Okay, but neither of you own your companies outside of your trading services. Correct. All right, well, thank you for that. And but that may change. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, we'll stand by. Thank you uh, for tuning in to the Top Pick segment this week. Don't forget, you can find out more information on either of these companies, both of these companies, or other stocks you might be interested in at Zax.com. All you need to do is get over to the homepage. You can search all the information right from there. With Dave and Kevin, I'm Terry Ruffalo.